Hej, för att du ställer den, viss. Vi trakar Norfärn TN 7200 Multichannel Peak Analyzer. Yes, whatever it is. So it is a one euro eBay find. There is very little bit of information available on the web about this thing. It looks like it is a measuring instrument related to mass spectrometers or something like this. There is two or three documents online that mentions it is uh, existing, but uh, really not much. We have uh, uh, aluminium case, it is plastic color but it is actually aluminium with a very small monochrome display it seems. A control panel with a bunch of buttons, potentiometers here. So I will zoom and we will have a better look at the controls on the front side. Okay, so we have the display uh, vertical and horizontal arrows here, log push button, calibration channel number, acquire stop RS data reset test, in and out, strip sum arith for arithmetics maybe, uh, remote and auto repeat, we have memory group, 1 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 2, and 1 to 3, 4 quarters, looks like. Overlap on the vertical uh, sep for separation, maybe. On the lower half, uh, numeric keyboard, setup, clear, and enter for that do and also yes and no. Uh, endless uh, turn button here with region, attach, height or low, and marker. And we have the uh, time percentage galvanometer and a bunch of uh, multi turn buttons for ULD, LLD, 500 to 1500 volts, gain and the intensity button for the display that seem to be also at the same time the on off button, but it is uh, turning endlessly so. I am not sure about it. Okay, now we will have a look at the backside. So, backside, we have uh, obviously a series of uh, spots for some kind of options. First one here is a switch with HV as high voltage on and off and some kind of uh, insulated BNC plug. Here we have a DB25 terminal. So in the next video I may try to connect it to a computer but I have to find where is my stock of uh, RS232 wires to do it. And it will be obviously onto a Kamikaze uh, old computer. I will do this but should be interesting. Here where the connector that actually we did already see already see on the uh, Thompson CSF military computer I made a teardown off a few months ago. On the right here uh, probably the uh, signal input yes input with a preamp or direct Coupling DC passive and active, coink and anti, gate MCS in, video trigger SCA out and DT in and out which are bridged together. Uh, bottom part we have a very noisy and full of crap fan. We have more uh, blanking panels. We have voltage selector, we have the manufacturer label, very cheap label in fact for such a device. Um, 
So it is made in USA, but it, we are missing the part here. We are missing also the uh, revision number. We have a serial number, pretty huge actually. 1188329. And we have fuse holder and power input and one over DB25 here. Okay, now I will try to power it on and see what happens. Okay, let's apply the power and see what happens. We will have magic smoke. Oh, the fan is turning at least. Angry noise. Uh, I may need to cut my uh, light in order to see something on the display. If there is anything to see. I am turning the intensity. Ah, yes. A little bit it is very dim but also very precise and very sharp you can see it is telling TN 7200 and nothing else so at least it means it is not just an oscilloscope screen and we might have some computer stuff going on inside this I do not know if it is booting or anything Taking some time for sure. So let's try to press the buttons. Setup. Press any flashing button. Uh, set up the acquire for example. Acquire uh, PHA or MCS. Let's say we will acquire MCS. Uh, I have no clue at all of what I am doing. Number of sweeps. Infinite. No, we do not want infinite. 12. Uh, dwell. No ID. No ID. Preset integral. No ID. Setup complete. We are done. Okay. What else? If I repress setup, I try another one. Setup the remote. Option missing. Okay. Uh, clear now. Setup. Setup. Setup the strip sum. No, we are it. Okay. Oops. We have add constant, multiply, divide, normalize, differentiate, integral, and smooth. I do not show now how you will see it on your uh, screen because of uh, sweeping of a display. But uh, in real life it is very sharp and steady display. Not high contrast but very quite good at least. Okay, uh, no I do not want this. I want uh, to go in the setup of a strip sum. Strip sum and move. Okay. What else? Setup of uh, calibration. Low calibration. Zero. Yes. High calibration. We do not want uh, zero in high calibration. I will type 100. Enter. Setup complete. Okay. Uh, what else? What can I do else than the setup? I would like to know. So I will start pressing on, on, on random buttons. I will press on acquire. It does nothing. Operation stop. It does nothing. Oops. It is not happy it seems. Uh, memory group. Oh. Something did happen here. We have uh, some kind of a chart on the display. With... Uh, Little numbers here at the bottom. I can move here with uh, if I turn the silver button at the bottom, we are on less one. I can sweep all of the display. So it seems that uh, at some point we should have curves appearing here and it will allow to. Uh, Align on something on misery, maybe. 
overlap ok it is doing something else I have no idea, I do not know if it's a diagonal lines are normal or if something is failing ok all the uh, multi potentiometers here must be for uh, some kind of uh, analog front end I believe uh, I have raised on attach I oh look at this we are integrating we are calculating the surface it seems ah, marker you can see probably very slow processor action here yes attack low it does not much of a difference. I have strictly no idea of what it is, but ah, so we are missing uh, probably some kind of input signal. Probably not everything is appearing on the screen. Well, at least at least it is my guess. And uh, okay. So it looks like it will not do a lot more thing. Oh. Your guess is as good as mine, uh, algorithm. In fact, when I turn the, the button, the value here is uh, decreasing, decreasing, decreasing until this uh, minimal level and. Uh, 2048 at the maximum. Okay, the other buttons do not seem to do anything on the display except uh, intensity, of course. Calibration, channel number 5, enter. There's nothing. Ah, oh, I have something different here. Okay, well, quite a bit of a mystery, this thing. I hope you did see more or less well what is happening on the display. So now we will uh, crack it open and check what we have inside. Okay, so before I open the cover, it is just for screws, by the way. What do we know and what can we expect? We know we have a CRT display. We, are no, we know we have some uh, old school computer action going on. We know we must have uh, uh, some uh, analog signal processing. And we have some kind of high voltage power supply that outputs to the back. And we have front panel a bunch of potentiometers. And we have the sun in the way. So let's pull the cover off. Um, okay, big uh, metal piece covering uh, big PCBs at this side. Three of them, it looks like. On the top, it is written uh, in French use cable number one and use probe number one. And in the cover we have pretty serious uh, parts to secure the handle and to stop the front and back panel from moving too, too far inside. And I can already tell they are imperial screws. Of course. So we have first side here. I will remove this plate right now. So it is interesting to note that the three screws were almost completely loose. We have this uh, triangle uh, aluminium piece and we have this PCB we will uh, have a better look at later. 
Um, we can see it is a slot in PCB with a motherboard at the bottom. We have an empty slot here for one more circuit board, obviously. And it is quite weird because not only you have a card edge connector, but you have one wire harness going in here. You have one here, and you have one here at the bottom. So let me turn the thing around. Other side, we have not much to see. In fact, big shielding here for the uh, display section. Little PCB here on behind either. Uh, most probably the power supply and little module here that is written danger high voltage. Here you have the uh, CRT display by, made by Clinton Taiwan Corporation. I don't know if it is the wall unit or just the seems to be it is just the picture tube. So most probably this is a uh, of the shelf uh, assembly. They did purchase and uh, put on the thing. I will see if it is possible to remove it. Um, and uh, well, we will have a look at some details and then I will take the thing apart. So, first detail here you have the back of the front panel, in fact, where you uh, have multi turn potentiometers. Here, and at the, if you remember, we have a multi turn, you can just barely see it here. Silver multi turn uh, knob here, you can turn endlessly, and it is very interesting because it looks like they did use a DC motor to do the job. Really, really weird. So they must be sensing the uh, voltage generated by the DC motor, I guess. But maybe we can check this just one second. Okay, time for some anang multimeter action in AC voltage, of course. So if I turn this button, yes. So they did really use a DC motor as a jog button sensor. Quite uh, unexpected and interesting. So I guess if I power the motor, I will uh, make the button turn, but as I do not know what is connected at the other side, I will not do it for now until I disconnect maybe everything inside because I do not want to blow some uh, circuitry. But uh, it is uh, quite an unexpected find. Okay, let's uh, continue. Here we have the back of the front panel. You can see the LEDs. Uh, shining through the PCBs with little holes. They are old school surface mount LEDs and probably tactile uh, buttons on the other side. And here all the back side of the uh, BNCs. This here is going to the high voltage plug BNC here. And this is obviously some flavor of a high voltage power supply, as it is clearly written on it. And it looks like to remove it, you have to undo two screws which are here, all at the bottom. You do not see it. So in fact the screws are here, and you have to reach here, them from here. It will be very convenient. You can see we have some uh, terminal blocks here. To interconnect uh, stuff in the device. Okay, now I will uh, remove all the major parts in order to be able to have a better look at them.
Okay, so I have to say that this, this thing is really a pain to work with because some screws are really difficult to reach. Some parts will not come off because of uh, screw terminals or wires. Uh, wire looms in uh, several sections but all in one part that will go in all possible directions. Uh, stuff like this, this little plug from the back which is uh, completely in the way of everything else like so, looks like it is an option they did install on the connect it here but uh, the wire is uh, in the way of everything else ok but we are now apart, I will put the camera over it and we will have a better look at everything so I will start with the uh, switching power supply in here, apparently a very old school uh, power supply, probably off the shelf because of the screw terminals you can see here. Uh, I do not see any brand on this, but seems uh, quite well made, so I am trying to check if I find any dead code. And, uh, uh, maybe I have 87 on this uh, power transistor here, you can see, but I am not sure if it is this or not. Ah, there is a brand here, Sierra Sin Power Systems, just uh, you cannot see it here, behind the yellow capacitors. Ok, uh, we have now a, a better access to the front panel, will you see it? Uh, we have the, uh, all the trimmer capacity, capaci uh, potentiometers, the little galvanometer, and some more stuff here, the, the, this must be the, yes, one of the uh, multi-turn Potentiometer is not the same model, you can see we have bones here, and here we have something else. Maybe like so you will see better. Excuse me, everything is big and totally in the way. And again our Canon DC motor has a button. Ok, now we will have a look immediately to this uh, high voltage power supply. So we have here upside down a high voltage shield top side with a serial number on it, just a PCB to act as a shielding it seems, but they did serialize it, extra long screws here, some kind of high voltage resistor blue thing here, I will try to not undo it completely. Ok, like so. So what do we have? We have MCO high voltage thing. Uh, step transformer probably, something like this. Some uh, TRW, yes, very high voltage uh, ceramic uh, resistor here probably. Some controls, settings. High voltage capacitors here, and I can see we have actually here this uh, thing you can unplug. It is written plus out on this side, but on the other side it is written minus out. So it looks like it is some kind of setting you can do. And here is our back panel plate with uh, high voltage BNC on the uh, on off switch of very nice quality, it is a guard switch, you cannot uh, actuate without uh, pulling on it, for safety probably. Ok, and here at least now we can see very well the other things on the back panel, including all the other BNCs, and the very dusty fan from the um, spring DC Rotron brand. Ok, I will try to rearrange all this and we will go to the next part. 
So why I have all the active electronics disconnected, I will try to power this motor. And yes, clearly enough, it is a motor used as a button. First time ever I see it, I believe. You never, never end having surprises when taking apart stuff, obviously. So next part is this little uh, PCB on this uh, piece of metal which was attached in front of a power supply. Probably it acts like a shielding at the same time. And uh, I am not sure where it is going to because the wire harnesses are a real mess. It is called a preamp board here in the copper. You can see copper on the side. We have LM318, some uh, unidentified chip here, and LM310. Very old school, almost uh, military grade components, as you can see. Uh, silver meter car capacitors, those are probably uh, polarized tantalum caps. Trimmer, uh, the resistors also are, uh, are inductors here, are very nice quality. Some uh, probably another uh, op amp here in the can and yes very expensive uh, silver mica capacitors from Sangamo company nothing on the rear side nothing here so we move on to the display so just a quick addition about this part I did just reinstall there is uh, available standoffs that are not populated so probably for some options that are not fitted here so this display assembly, uh, it is probably off-shelf display they did purchase and install in their product. I can see a sticker here, so I will undo this bottom panel. Or maybe we will be able to find out the model number. It would be nice if it is possible to reuse it for something else, if the data sheet is uh, possible to get. Very nice aluminium uh, work, at least in this device. Much better than the wire harness. Well, they are not bad, but uh, they are in the way and not convenient at all. Uh, bottom side of the PCB here, as I did power it not a long time ago, I will not touch anything, but seems to be pretty clean and uh, no problems with the solders. And here is the manufacturer information for you playing at home. Dotronics Incorporated in New Brighton, Minnesota. And we have a manufacturing date of November 1988. So it is matching the um, 87 I did find in the power supply. Okay, interesting. Um, Close up for you at the stickers for you, uh, CRT aficionados. And very regular uh, CRT electronics with uh, some unpopulated parts, as you can see. Small. Um, back here and also if the serial number is the serial number of the unit probably not for of the flyback itself um, neck connector here everything very typical nothing special very nice little uh, tube here is the front uh, bracket for it and little spring to keep it in place 
Okay, now we can move on to the uh, main electronic boards. So about the electronic boards, we have one uh, kind of analog board on the two uh, processor boards. Is it written on this circuit side? Nothing else. Nothing on the handles here at the top. Uh, so I have no idea of what it is doing. Ah, it is written here. ADC board. I will zoom in for you. So yes, it is doing some analog to digital conversion. So I will just show you everything what we, we have on it. SN74 series chips here. More uh, analog stuff here with uh, LM306 op amps here in cans. This I guess is the main signal input. Um, coax here going all the way to the other side. And a lot of uh, deep clips. Here we have a NEC 8253C-5, whatever it is. Some uh, socketed clips here for some reason, two of them. And uh, more of uh, our Sangamo silver mica capacitors. A lot of them used as uh, decoupling, it seems almost. One little trimmer capacitor here. So all this probably doing some sampling and some ADC ing to the uh, processor boards. So speaking about the processor boards, we have two of them. We have the uh, micro A board, which seems to be the most complicated one you can see. So. I guess we might have one board for the um, user interface and one board for uh, signal processing. Some deep switches here, maybe for maintenance mode or something. P P eighty eighty five A. This might might be actually the processor from AMD. Copyright 1981. Lot of EPROMs. And here are the other parts. Looks like we have a RAM here with uh, provision for extra RAM, which was not fitted. And probably in out interface here, I believe, with a lot of uh, again SN74 series. A wall bunch of uh, silver mica capacitors here for decoupling. Here also, really interesting. You can see gold on the card edge connectors. Nothing else on the rear side except it is uh, really clean. I do not see any bulge wire on the thing. So, a uh, nice job uh, about these PCBs. Sadly, the uh, rest of this instrument is not. Uh, so nice, I, I find. Okay, the overboard. Uh, same uh, processor here, actually, same chip. Crystal oscillator. Um, some kind of programmable chips here. More SN74 series. More EPROMs and here again one uh, memory chip with one unpopulated slot. Same thing, very nice. Uh, something written, handwritten here. But very nice work on this uh, PCBs, obviously. Some unused. Uh, in fact, this uh, card edge connector was not used in the device. But I can see marks of a connector being inserted on it. So maybe it was for uh, programming. 
or something. We have the same on the other one, by the way. So for factory test or uh, programming, yes, I know you will say all the tracks are in uh, short circuit, but actually on the other side we have individual tracks. Okay, so I will put this back together and we will see if it is still powering on. So, yes, the thing is back together and uh, working. Now the question is what to do with it. So I will play with uh, RS232 terminals on the back. If I can get any interesting result, there will be an update video. If not, I guess it will end as scrap because it is not so useful and it is big and I did just pay one euro for it. So just these buttons here, counting multi ton buttons, are worth uh, some some money. So I may uh, sell uh, them to refund my purchase at least. Probably, I should keep the uh, motherboards the. Uh, main uh, circuit boards as collectors because they are very nice and uh, typical of an era the era of uh, dual inline glory and the other parts will go to the scrapyard maybe the case can be useful for something or maybe I could sell this uh, display to someone who needs it for another piece of equipment we never know Apart from this, uh, yes, it was an interesting uh, discovery, even if I still do not know what it is for. Okay, so thanks for watching. Bye bye.